Magandang hapon sa ating lahat. Uh, thank you for uh, going to this uh, webinar. Uh, while waiting for my slides to show up, uh, Michael, show it up. Uh, I just want to share that uh, this study is part of a series of studies on the evaluating our, the RPRH law. Uh, it started out 2018, but the actual study uh, was conducted uh, in 2020. Uh, there's a lot of drama uh, in, in doing this study because uh, while we were uh, doing field work, doing RKIs, FGDs, uh, first leg of our uh, field work, uh, actually, do nag start yung nag open yung uh, pandemic sa Philippines, and we had to pack up and uh, and reassess um, um, our activities. So there are a number of components in this study. So there's the macro component, which was presented earlier, and then uh, at the more um, micro level, we have this local service delivery component, and then. Uh, uh, something that cuts across uh, macro, meso, and the micro is the education component that will be presented uh, later. And then there's another component, which is a legal review of the RPRH law, which is uh, being conducted by uh, uh, MN Professor uh, uh, Beth Pangalangan from the UP uh, School, uh, College of Law and the UP Law Center. Uh, but hopefully in the future it will also be presented. Uh, the end view is that we would have, if there would be um, uh, an impact evaluation of these of the RPRH law, we would have these proxy evaluations looking at these many different aspects of the law. And uh, this one, specifically this study that I'm presenting, is on local service delivery, which I worked with uh, Jer uh, Jerome Patrick Cruz, who is at uh, University of Illinois, I think, right now, and uh, our very own Sandra Sitam. Next slide, please. So, uh, I only have 20 minutes. Uh, there are 48 slides in this presentation. I would skim through most of it. In the last five minutes, uh, I would go through uh, our recommendations, which I think is the more important part of this study. But this is the summary of the things that I want you to remember from this study. One is that um, LGUs play a very important role, very important roles, Maramisha, in the delivery of RPH, RH services and and there has been some progress along some dimensions of RPRH, and we need to, to celebrate those progress at community level, but then uh, much is to be desired uh, in this progress. And then finally, uh, based on the results of our uh, uh, evaluation, there's a need to focus on building required support to ensure that there's the delivery of minimum quality of service at the local level. So remember these three, just in case maputo lang ko somewhere. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please. So this is just a review uh, of RPRH law. Malamang sa malamang alam niyo to if you're attending this webinar. So it was enacted in July 2012, but uh, 1970s palang we've been trying to have a, a law something like this. Uh, but then since uh, July 2012, it has faced many legal obstacles. Uh, the, the RPRH law is a landmark law that guarantees universal access to medically safe, non-abortive patient, effective. Uh, Reproductive health services and relevant information and education is given free to underprivileged sectors. Uh, next slide. And this is just a timeline of, uh, of the RPRH law since 2012. This was also presented um, earlier. But uh, the takeaway from this uh, timeline is that we did our evaluation in 2020 uh, and the, the law wasn't actually implemented fully until 2017. So when we were doing the evaluations, wala pang tatlong taon yung law. And I, I think uh, it's still a young law and there's still much room uh, for it to grow, uh, especially the implementation side. Next slide. So uh, from the law, uh, we know that local governments play important roles in the delivery of R RPRH services. And kanina pinakita yung governance at the national level. But if you go to the next slide, please, uh, nakasulat dun sa RPRH law and its implementing rules and regulations. Ano ba yung mga responsibilities ng LJUs in implementing this law? So, ito mga functional areas that we've identified. So, for service provision, it says that LGU should ensure the provision of a full range of RPRH healthcare services among local public health facilities, including all modern family planning methods. Sa HRH, it needs to maintain a sufficient number of skilled health staff in, in public health facilities. In health facilities, it needs to uh, LGUs need to establish and upgrade local public health facilities for del delivering RPRH services, especially yung mga emergency obstetrics and newborn care. 
uh, supplies, products, and equipment, uh, LGUs are tasked to ensure that local public health facilities have supplies and equipment for delivering these RPRH services uh, through the wish provision and possibly through LGU's uh, own procurement program. Meron pang susunod. Next slide, please. So service delivery network, uh, the law also tasks LGUs to map and build the local service delivery networks, including both public and private health facilities uh, with proper referral mechanisms for RPR services. For health promotion, it, uh, it needs to develop and implement RPRH health uh, promotion, education, and communication plans, although we didn't tackle this uh, as the next uh, presentation. Yun. It, also, it was also tasked to do maternal, fetal, infant death reviews, and for funding, uh, it was uh, mandated to allocate sufficient local funds for RPRH implementation. Uh, next slide. So, so maraming, maraming hinihingi yung batas sa ating mga LGU. Eh, and part and pinakamalaki doon is that they need to provide uh, comprehensive RH care. And part of this RH care is family planning, maternal and child health, adolescent sexual and reproductive health. So next slide, you would see uh, violence against women and child and, and their children. Uh, reproductive tract infections, disorders, and HIV. So, so yung halos yung buong tract ng RPRH law um, nakatask doon sa LGU na i-implement. Next slide. So, this study uh, looks at, uh, at that implementation at the local level. We uh, The study aims to assess the service delivery mechanisms of RPH-related programs at the local government level and to identify enabling factors, barriers, and bottlenecks that affect the timely and efficient delivery of reproductive health services and commodities at the front line. So we have three uh, specific questions. What have we accomplished so far? So we want to look at outcomes. And then are mandated services provided? So yung mga kailangan provide ng LGUs, yung mga outputs nila dapat for the RPRH law, uh, are they being provided? And then finally, are the mandated support built? Kasi in order to provide those services, kailangan mo ng inputs uh, to, 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 do, to, to, to do those services. So meron ba nun? So we want to look at these uh, aspects of the implementation uh, by LGUs. And guiding us is this RPRH logical framework by the DOH and POPCO, which just we just shows you input process, input and processes, outputs, outcomes. Naka focus kami sa inputs, processes, and outputs. Yung outcomes, so we just breeze through it. Uh, kasi yung focus talaga ng aming, uh, aming evaluations just hanggang sa outputs na. Pero sinaman namin yung outcomes just to provide a flavor of nasa na ba tayo ngayon. Next slide, please. So uh, we did a uh, mixed method design. So we have an LGU online survey. Uh, we were hoping to have a full census of all local governments in the Philippines. Unfortunately, uh, when we were doing this online survey, uh, pandemic, we didn't know uh, what's happening, uh, what's to, what to expect. And, and people at the local level were actually very busy. Konti lang yung aming hamig na sumagot. So for provinces out of 81, we've got 23. For municipalities, 25 of about 1,500. Uh, cities, 16, uh, 16 out of about 150. And major comprehensive view of our online survey. So on average, about 56% of the questions were answered. So hindi siya masyadong kompleto. But, but then uh, we were not uh, aiming for um, representativeness, what we want is some flavor. We want it to be comprehensive and provide some flavor. Uh, ano ba yung nangyayari? We also did FGDs, KAIs with program managers, frontline workers. Uh, we were supposed to do it it's, uh, in Luzon, besides Mindanao and NCR, but unfortunately, we were only able to do uh, the face-to-face -face one in Leyte, tapos nagka-COVID na nga. And then, uh, hindi kami nakakuha ng uh, Northern Luzon that was supposed to be Baguio, but we were hurting. So we ended up with this. And then we did thematic analysis of the quarterly uh, regional implementing uh, team minutes of meetings. We also did analysis of secondary data, so from the Bureau of Local Government Finance data and DHS. Uh, we were hoping to get uh, data that is representative of the whole Philippines rather than yung, hindi masyadong, yung, so yung quality of data is important to us. And the study plan instruments were reviewed by St. Cabrini Medical Center at the Asian Eye Institute. Um, next slide, please. So what have we accomplished so far? In the next slide, you would see na meron naman tayong na-accomplish. Uh, so for instance, uh, there are three timelines here. So yung baseline update, uh, which is the latest available year, and then the target. 
ano ba yung target that is provided in one of the documents uh, by government. So in this case, NOH would be the uh, National Objectives for Health for 2011-2016. So for MMR, uh, we and which is targeting 50 per 100,000 population as a 86 tayo uh, between 2013 and 2016 so hindi tayo umabot pa medyo mataas pa ng konti uh in lethal mortality ratio we were targeting 10 per 1000 live births uh, medyo hindi pa rin tayo umabot uh, proportion of pregnant women with at least four antenatal care visits so so meron tayo mga ganun na hindi tayo medyo umabot sa ating mga targets uh, next slide please so, ito, uh, yung iba dito, uh, much of these uh, indicators are from the uh, MND framework, no RPRH uh, by DOH and Popcom. But may, some of these we've identified, uh, kami yun identify based on available data. So, this is for uh, human resource. Next slide, please. So this is for family planning. So the modern contraceptive surveillance rate among currently married women, and which is targeting 65% by 2016. In 2017, it's 40%. So uh, we're not quite there yet. Uh, next slide. So ito, okay tayo dito. So adolescent birth rate, ang target is 50 per uh, thousand in 2018. Uh, from 57 in reaches in 2013, we'll to 47. So, okay tayo doon. Uh, percentage of adults who had sexual intercourse before uh, age 15, we are targeting less than 2%. So, from 2013, 2.2%. In 2017, 1.6%. So, check din tayo dyan. So, meron tayo mga successes. But then, uh, there are some areas na kailangan pa natin uh, mag-improve pa. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide. So this is just a list of, uh, of the things. Uh, this is an open inv uh, invitation for you to check the paper where this presentation is based on so that the uh, details ma makita nyo then. Next slide, please. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, so the one that I presented earlier is at the national level, but when you look at uh, the regional level, this disparity in the progress uh, in how things uh, uh, have been doing uh, in many of these outcomes. So for demand for family planning, you will see yung, yung exact would be women with met family planning need between 2013 and 2017. So kung nasa right ka, ibig sabihin, uh, tumaas. Pag nasa left ka nung line, bumaba. Tapos yung y-axis natin, women with unmet family planning need. Uh, pag nasa taas ka, ibig sabihin, tumaas yung unmet family planning need nyo noong 2013, 2017. Uh, pag nasa baba ka, uh, so gusto mo uh, lumiit yung unmet family planning need to mas yung met family planning need. So dapat nandito tayo sa kung nasan yung ARMM, yung region 6, 5. So nandun tayo dapat. Yun ang gusto natin. But unfortunately, uh, for some of the regions, uh, nandun sila sa kabilang side. So and, and these uh, disparity across the regions, makikita mo uh, on different outcomes. So early childbearing and as I knowledge, uh, on your right, uh, next slide, please. Uh, delivery by skilled attendant and infant mortality rate, uh, violence against women and help seeking behavior. So you, you see this disparity across the region. And and ang sinasabi ko lang dito is that uh, when you look at the national numbers, it looks like walang progress or there could be progress. But when you look at the regions, iba iba yung experiences ng ating mga uh, sa, sa mga localities. Next slide. So. So the next question is, these are the outcomes. So what next? Are the mandated services provided? Yung bang mga services na sinabi ng uh, RPRH law na ibigay ba ng ating mga LGUs? At marami silang hinihingi. So uh, ang sistema ko dito is that uh, I'd provide the role uh, that's, that's mandated by the law. And then ano ba yung nangyayari at the local level based on our data gathering? So service provision. So, sabi ng uh, RPRH law, the LGU needs to ensure the provision of full range of RPH healthcare services among local public health facilities, including all modern family planning methods. Well, uh, for the most part, based on our data gathering, these services are actually part of LGU services even before RPRH laws. And many of the, the people that we've talked to said that these that the RPRH law is just a formality of this implementation. So. Uh, the RPRH services are generally provided or referral to other facilities uh, are, are given if it's not provided uh, particularly by the LGU, like for mental health services. Uh, although 
walang nagsabi doon na they contact services from the private sector which is allowed under the law. Uh, for the most part, immunization services provided once a week, although meron ding mga konti na araw-araw sila nagbibigay. Uh, yung pre-marriage orientation counseling, uh, this is required before the issuance of marriage license. Uh, it's been there uh, even before the RPR law. Next slide, please. So while services are generally available, there appears to be material differences in the provision of these mandated services. So for instance, uh, we asked them, meron lista ano sa RPR law, ano ba dapat yung binibigay no, no mga LGUs? Uh, it, it depends on whether you're a province, uh, you're a city, you're a municipality. So tinanong namin sa kanila, meron ba kayong ganitong service? At ito yung mga usual na sinasabing uh, wala silang binibigay. So uh, natural family planning supply, so yung charts, yung thermometers, standard these method beads, uh, wala silang supply niyan sa LGs for, for many of the uh, LGs that we've talked to. So yung resupply in condo of condoms and oral contraceptive pills, uh, uh, some LGs uh, mentioned this, na wala silang ganyan. So not all LGs have assigned uh, port to designated healthcare provider for um, RH services. So this is mandated by law, pero meron mga, mga uh, mga LGUs na hindi nakakapagbigay ng ganyan servisyo. And while there have been steps to cater to special needs of PWD, some LGUs reported not being able to provide access to information and adopt procedures for PWD needs. So, ganito yung tenor nung, nung mga uh, aming mga observations uh, throughout this. Uh, next slide, please. So, in crisis situations, so, kasabi dun sa uh, RPRH law, the, the LGU should provide these RH services in crisis situations. However, many reported that there's no changes in service delivery during crisis situations. In evacuation centers, uh, usually medical and psychosocial yung mga interventions and not necessarily family planning services as mandated by law. And actually, yung COVID-19 is a real-life test of the RPR service provision during a crisis. And many reported during that time that there were no changes in the service delivery. Uh, siguro ang medyo nagbago lang ay yung pre-marriage counseling uh, kasi ginawa nila is they condensed this from usual na 4 hours into 30 minutes. Although sinabi naman nila na medyo kumunti naman yung kumuha ng pre-marriage counseling. Next slide please. Uh, so medyo marami tong listahan na to and I would skip through most of it but I invite you to to read the paper kasi yung uh, details of this uh, are um, are in the paper. So service delivery network, they're supposed to map and build this, but unfortunately, uh, sabi nila, most of them actually said that they already map these healthcare facilities, but some LGUs do not include private sector in this uh, service delivery network. Next slide. Uh, health promotion, uh, the, the next presentation would uh, present this more. Uh, but I think the, the, the important part of this is that some LGUs actually were able to leverage on social media through Facebook and traditional media, even yung regular, meron silang re, uh, regular radio plug, uh, plugs, radio plugs uh, as platforms to disseminate itong mga uh, RPRH na services nila. Next slide, please. So, maternal and fetal infant death reviews. Uh, sinasabi nila yung mga nakausap namin, they have maternal death reviews. Uh, usually monthly, but others less frequently, uh, yung iba quarterly. At doon sa mga nakausap namin, uh, walang nagsabi na they had uh, fetal or infant death reviews. Um, uh, but maybe, karamihan sa kanila ang sinasabi na wala naman daw namatay na bata sa kanila, kaya walang uh, ganitong uh, review. Next slide, please. So, are the mandated support built? So, dapat merong servisyo, uh, pero paano ka magbigay ng servisyo kung wala yung support para magawa mo yung servisyo. So, next slide please. So, we look at different facets. So, we look at healthy human resources. Ang sabi doon, the, the LGUs need to maintain a sufficient number of uh, skilled health staff. But, uh, based on our analysis, uh, well, maraming, maraming lugar sa Pilipinas, mga LGUs, that do not meet the 23 uh, doctors, nurses, midwives per 10,000 population. Uh, that is recommended by the WHO to meet the 80% delivery of, uh, of by skilled birth attendants. Uh, next slide, please. And more so, if you look ju at just the government uh, health workers. Uh, next slide. Uh, so, the, the previous slide, you know, the one, uh, yung right neto is without the DOH augmentation. And if you see, kung kumpara nyo dun sa 23, 
uh, masyadong malayo talaga yung uh, HRH density natin at the uh, local levels. And even with the DOH uh, augmentation, hindi tayo aabot sa 23 may hinihingi ng WHO sana. So we need uh, to do more to be able to raise to 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 raise that uh, density. Next slide, please. So next slide, pa. Ah, isa pa magandang kwento dito. Uh, the law requires that you have an RH officer for the day, but many of the LGUs that we've talked to, wala silang ganun. Uh, they've identified many issues, so fast turnover, need for training, heavy workload. Uh, there were some instances that they said that uh, nakausap namin na sa sobrang dami ng mga reports na kailangan nilang gawin. Sometimes they stop the service so that they can do the, ano, the recording. Uh, they also reported difficulty in hiring and voltage. Uh, okay. So if you go to, uh, Michael, can you go to uh, conclusion and the recommendation, please? Okay. So, um, I skip through most of it, but then that, that is the tenor of the results that we found that uh, merong mga servisyo na gusto na kailangang ibigay pero hindi maibigay kasi kulang tayo ng resources. And, and, and that, that's the story, whether you look at the human resource, financing, supplies. So, in, in conclusion, uh, we saw that there has been some progress along some dimensions of the RPRH law. Uh, so, while services are generally available, there appears to be differences in the provision of these mandated services. Um, there were many new initiatives by LG. RPRHO, but then uh, more may, may be needed. Next slide, please. So uh, there are three key recommendations, uh, no, 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 three blocks of recommendations uh, that I want to focus on. One is on building needed support for RPRH. Uh, for RPRH. One is that uh, there is a need to, be, to better forecast your demand. Uh, yung, that there would be an effective supply chain management or because we know that effective supply chain management is crucial in ensuring non uh, no stock outs or overstocks because we've documented na there were instances na meron mga, re, mga LGUs na walang stock pero mal meron malapit sa kanila na sobra-sobra naman stock. So we need to forecast that demand uh, better. Uh, we also think that yung reliance natin on the which HHR augmentation may not be sustainable. So we need, yung local governments need to attract, develop, and maintain local health talents that would be funded by LGU so that they would be able to, to, to uh, make it more sustainable. Uh, finally, yung last slide. So delivery of services, uh, the LGUs need to ensure the minimum quality of service per law. Uh, and we welcome innovations, but we need to identify on, and focus on, on what works. And finally, on monitoring progress, uh, there's a need to streamline indicators uh, given the capacity to deliver. And then we need to focus what can be delivered effectively by different stakeholders. So thank you so much. I'm, I'm very sorry for going over time.